friction. In the remainder of this unit, we're going to look at a number of different forces and how they're applied. The first of these is friction. It's very familiar to us. It's the reason why people have been confused about the motion of, of objects, thinking that one has to keep pushing them to keep them moving. Friction is a resistive force. It opposes the motion of an object. What does sandpaper have to do with friction? Well, the very roughness of the surface gives us some insight into what causes friction. There are a number of different resistive forces in nature. Friction is one of the more familiar of these. It's the reason objects stop rolling or sliding along a surface. It's the reason it's difficult to start pushing a heavy box along a floor. There are many different types of resistive forces. Aside from friction, there's air resistance, which is essentially the friction between solid objects and air. There's also viscosity, which is the friction within a fluid or between a fluid and a solid surface. You might be wondering where this resistive force friction comes from. Well, let's go back to thinking about our block of sandpaper before. The surface of the sandpaper is very rough, and you can well imagine rubbing two pieces of sandpaper across each other. It's very hard to move one across the other. And you know that it's the roughness of those surfaces that's making it difficult to move one over the other. Well, on a microscopic scale, most surfaces are rough as well. They may not be quite as rough as, as sandpaper, but they certainly have a roughness. So if you were to um, look at one of these surfaces under a microscope, you would see something like this. And both of these surfaces, when sliding across each other, are going to interact. Those interactions may be somewhat complex, but that's not important at this point. What is important is modeling how friction works, and we can do that in a very simple way. In this unit, we're going to model two different types of friction. One is the friction of one object already sliding over the surface of another, and the other type of friction will be one where we're trying to push an object across the surface of the other, but the object hasn't yet started to move. It's being held in place by friction. Let's pay attention to the first one first. The first one, that of an object already in motion across another, is called kinetic friction. For kinetic, also known as sliding friction, we have an, a simple equation which says that the force of friction is proportional to, through this constant, the normal force. Now, for horizontal surfaces, the normal force is just the same as the weight of the object. Now, this coefficient of friction, this constant that we're talking about, is something that actually varies from, a pair of, from one pair of surfaces to another. So wood on wood, for example, is going to be very different from wood on glass. We'll get to all of that shortly. Now let's take a look at a number of these coefficients of kinetic friction. Now, one thing to remember is that the, co the larger the coefficient of kinetic friction, the larger the frictional force will be. Let me just write this down again. Remember, the force of friction is going to be equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. Okay, So the larger the coefficient of kinetic friction is, the greater the frictional force will be. If we look at this table, there's some really interesting things to note here. Here we have things like um, wood on wood with a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.2. That means that for a, an object on a horizontal surface, the frictional force would be 20% of the weight of the object. Now, as we can see, um, let's look at some other ones which are actually quite fascinating. Ice on ice, ice on ice is very, very low, whereas when we look at something like rubber on a variety of solid surfaces, whether wet concrete to, um, to others which probably have much higher um, frictional interactions, you can see this is actually quite large, approaching almost the weight of the object. 
And then we have one of the best man-made uh, ultra-smooth surfaces, which is Teflon. And Teflon on Teflon only has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.05, a twentieth of the weight of something on a surface. And yet, compare that to ice on ice, and most amazingly, the surfaces within human joints, which is a fifth of that. We are um, amazingly engineered. Now let's apply some of what we've learned about free body diagrams and about kinetic friction. So in this example, we're going to consider a man accelerating a crate along a rough surface. The first thing we'll want to do is draw the crate's free body diagram. I'm going to reveal it to you. At the center, there's this dot that represents the crate, our body. Now it's sitting on a floor. And as we learned before, there are two forces acting here. There's a net force of zero in the vertical direction on the crate. One is its weight, mg, pulling down. And there's an exactly equal and opposite force pushing up, the normal force, F sub n. Looking to the right and left, we have two different forces. F applied, that's the pull by the man, and F frictional, which is going in the opposite direction, resisting the pull of the man. And again, what we've seen is that, or what we've said here is that we ex the man is accelerating the object. And to, to help us see that that's going to be the case, we can see that the applied force is larger than the frictional force here. So our next step is to determine the uh, um, net force in the x and y directions. Let's start off with the, with the um, y direction. In the y direction, uh, the sum of our uh, forces is just equal to the mass times acceleration in the y direction, in the vertical direction. And we know that the object isn't even moving in the vertical direction, never mind accelerating. So what we have is the sum of the forces in the y direction, the net force, is going to be zero because the acceleration is zero. The sum of these forces, the normal force pointing up, and the weight, mg, pulling down. So from this um, from this equation, we can see right away that the normal force and the weight are equal in magnitude. Now let's move on and look at the net forces in the x direction. Here, the sum of the net forces is equal to the mass times acceleration in the x direction. That's our acceleration over here. And we know that that's a positive amount. It's something that we've expressed here in the way we've stated the problem. The man is accelerating the crate over a rough surface. So now what we have is the net force, which is an applied force in the positive x direction, and a frictional force opposing it, hence the minus sign. That's equal to ma, or the acceleration in the x direction. 